Right, this one is called Honest Review of SAO Einkrad Arc, known as Part 1 of Season 1. The part that most people are familiar with, and the part that most people glaze saying is the greatest thing ever, except for the people that actually watch Season 3 and 4. Let's check it out. Coffee soda immediately. Did you Ew. know that in this world, you can be whatever you want? Okay. Ew. Maybe with the technology that we have right now, SA would look like this. Okay, that's cool. What do you want to be? Among Us. Since it's 2022, I figured now is the perfect time to start SAO week, month, or year. Beginning with Sword Art Online. <laughs> Did something happen in 2022? I actually don't know when Season 4, Season 3 came out. Was SAO trending? It's just, you know. Season 1, but not whatever this is, because I'm saving this train wreck for the next video. Dude, ALO is just... Part two of season one is just such a such an interesting arc where it was app it was dog shit for sure, but it was such an entertaining dog shit. You know what I mean? It's just like the whole Suguha, Kirito, you know, incest, and then fucking big bro in game she didn't even know in game, and she got double cucked. Like it was all over the place. But honestly. <laughs> I give it like like five point something out of ten, but it was still an entertaining watch. This is because I'm saving this train wreck for the next video. As always, it's up to me to change the name of this anime to something a bit more realistic. Yeah. Ninety day fiance <laughs> trapped in a dating sim, and finally, White Knight Kirito. If you think that Kirito is just so cool, he is. be sure to subscribe to my channel and join my Discord. Let me give you a satire synopsis of this anime, which does contain spoilers. The All year right. is 2022, which comes with the new release of oh 2022 and you know he's covering in 2022 and canonically 2022 is an essay started of the game sword art online a virtual reality mmorpg meanwhile i'm stuck playing vr among us in 2022 wah, wah. this heavily anticipated hold the fuck up there's a lot of furries in here what the fuck is going on here bro what the hell is up his among oh, us no. in 2022 this heavily anticipated game klein holy shit Yo, they already showed Klein in the beginning? So this is like when people first got their copies of SAO after camping out in the lines, right? I, I, we, did we already see Klein before he got introduced in the game? So this is like Klein in the Red Samurai Guild, like his, his friends, right? Was released with only 10,000 oh, copies? Where is the rest? I used to work at GameStop, so let me give you a quick math problem. If there are- Well... It was 10,000 copies distributed just for Japan. It wasn't a global launch, right? 125 million people in Japan and only 10,000 copies yeah. of a heavily anticipated game. How many people does that leave beating my ass? This is our main character, Kirito, a previous beta tester of the game. Beater. According to my own headcanon, when Reki Kawahara was creating Kirito, he had just one thought. Make him do- Make him fucking cool? That's pretty much it, right? Make him- Cool. Well, in season one, he was a very dark and brooding, emotional teenager, edgy as fuck. He was like 14 back then, though, right? So it kind of makes sense that, like, it's an accurate depiction of, like, an edgy teenager who is also super cool in the minds of other kids. Do cool things, and that'll be his whole personality. After starting, he builds a friendship with Klein. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. Yay. He tries to get Kirito to join his party of friends. But Kirito says no. I'll solo this instead. Because... What was the reason Kirito declined Klein? Because end of episode 1 it was revealed that this is a death match where if you die in the game you die in real life and Kirito has beater knowledge because he's already played the game and he wants to train by himself in secret or was it that he didn't want to get connected to people who he could lose and it's painful? But he didn't lose Sachi just yet so where did this trauma actually just like Resistance from joining Klein come from because he's just so cool all players are taken to one place with the creator of SAO Kaiba Akihiko This is the coolest shit ever bro the fucking Watashi wa Kaiba Akihiko and then like oh my god it just lets us everyone know you can't log out while you know the soundtrack plays I think it's got like, he who reigns over us it's such a fucking he he rules over us or something it's such a good moment bro one of the most like iconic moments in SAO comes out of the sky just a reminder that he probably spent hours coding this just to look cool yep. he informs them that they can no longer leave the game until they beat it also if they die in the game they die, die. for real this is 
Also, get the mirror out. Every girl beside you is actually a guy catfishing you. That's how you can tell that SAO was made in 2012, because nowadays, their method of victory would be to cancel him. <laughs> After yeah. Kaiba reveals their true identities as people who only have Just one Just a bunch of dudes! Kirito and Klein start- Honestly? People that have only one expression? I would say that this is better than the modern anime right now, where whenever you have a scene where you have a bunch of background filler characters, it's all just copy paste of CGI. You can't even see their face. It's mostly covered in helmets or it's just like a repetition of two to three variants copied and pasted over and over again. Only have one expression. Kirito and Klein start their adventure together. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. Klein was pretty sus to us in the beginning, bro. He, he was always kind of sus. He's like, oh, you're kind of my type, little boy. <laughs> Hey, yo! <laughs> Looks like Kirito's back to being client. And, and then after, it's not even just for Kirito. He was like thirsting for Asuna. And pretty much every girl who was like all underage, while Klein is like a, some 20 year old dude with like a job. <laughs> How old is Lisbeth again? Because Klein and Lisbeth's ship is an actual thing, right? Being a solo player. Many months later, Kirito goes to a meeting to discuss beating the first floor boss. Diablo! Unfortunately, they partake in Kirito's only weakness, social interaction. Like all <laughs> Discord mods, Kirito smells a woman from a mile away and parties up with her. Kirito begins to fight the floor boss with, Oh my god, she was actually a hot girl? After yep. defeating the boss and getting a kick-ass robe, he returns to solo leveling. This is a pretty cool moment, though. <laughs> I'm a beater. Gets his fucking black trench coat out, leaves. Leaving them a final message. But, like, this was intentionally done by Kirito to make him be the villain. I forget the exact reasoning, because this is when Diabel died, right? And it was a stupid way in the anime where he got one shot, and it seemed like he could still live if he took the fucking potion. But Diabas could refuse and says, please save these other people that you've met in the last 10 minutes. Apparently in the light novel, Diabas was already in a lethal position where the potion wouldn't have done anything, but the enemy didn't really convey that well. And then there's another guy with the fucking porcupine head that shows up and blames Kirito saying, oh, you're a beater. You knew how to beat this thing the entire time. And then Kirito's like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I'll, I will be the beater. You know what? I will take it upon myself to be this villain that you all think that I am. Fuck you. He's just so cool. Kirito gets love interested into a guild. They do not serve. Was it a love interested into a guild? I feel like the black cat, this is more of like Kirito is like he's never able to connect to people. He's a higher level than any one of them, but he's kind of smurfing here because this is like his like safe space where he feels comfortable to be around these people because he's obviously been so alone for a long time right and then the whole arc of this is it's kirito's fault again for people around them dying to further show this like edgy story of this angsty teenager that is so alone and trying to do things alone and give more reasons to ask why he's alone so gets love interested into a guild Sachi. they do Sachi. not survive <laughs> At oh, come on! With an after death YouTube video. This is sad as fuck. The Christmas episode, the recording of her song, it, it was very sad. It was very emotional, but also Sachi Ping being too high and dying. <laughs> and Kirito's high level creating this scenario where because he's partying with, you know, lower level people, it's his fault for them dying. Like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of comical now. Yo. <laughs> Are you stupid? This is humming. Now that Kirito has PTSD, <laughs> there's only one thing that can fix him now. More Asna or Lisbeth? Or women. This is Silica, a local Pokemon trainer who, after losing her crusty white dog, oh, Pina. gets saved by Kirito because he's just so cool. I actually enjoy Silica. I think Silica is one of the cutest girls ever in anime. Silica is a delight and... She doesn't really have an integral part in the story, right? This whole arc was kind of like Kirito and Silica, almost like a big bro little sis moment. There was some weird fan service with Silica, as usual, in SAO, but I think that Silica is just an enjoyable character. He goes on a quest with her to help her revive her Pokemon. He does this because... Replay that. That's so cool! He goes on a quest with her to help her revive her I've heard that somewhere. Hmm. 
Pokemon. He does this because she looks like his little sister, which wouldn't have bothered me originally, but then I saw this. ALO. <laughs> Oh man, this whole Halo, it was just, what the fuck was that arc, bro? And like the conclusion, it was honestly such a fucking hot garbage shit on dumpster on fire. But it's, it's fun to watch a dumpster on fire. It's just like, holy shit, it's happening, right? It's a fucking dumpster. Yeah, it's, it's on fire, but it's enjoyable. You know what I mean? I saw this. After being bullied by the local Malty, she comes to the realization that she's in love with Kirito. <sighs> I'm gonna say the thing. She wouldn't last a day in the cod lobbies back in my day. After getting the monster There was an uh, unexplainable, like, why the fuck did that girl, like, hate Silica so much? It never made sense to me. Born card on the 47th floor. I'm sorry, what happened to the last 46 floors? Don't worry about They're it. They're ambushed by Rosal. There's a lot of inconsistencies with the progression of the floors and like how fast or how long we stay in one floor and then boom, we're like 30 floors and we're like, what the fuck? Leah and her goons because they want their rare item. Oh my God, he's beating them by standing still because he's just so cool. Auto regen for Kirito at this point was higher than the DPS output from every one of them. I think was the reasoning why he could just stand there and win. After deporting them, he ditches love interest number three. Did he deport them? He put him in a prison. Deporting them, he ditches love interest number three, realizing that the last two relationships were dead ends, some more than others. So he returns to love interest number one. They, for some reason, become detectives. Was Silica ever a love interest? I never really saw Silica like that. I thought that she was always just like a cute little sister type. I think that Elizabeth could have been a love... Well, love interest doesn't... Yeah, maybe Silica saw Kirito in that way. Same with how Elizabeth saw Kirito in that way, but Kirito never saw those two in those ways. To solve a murder. Well, a few murders. But who cares about those dead people? Let's talk about the true murder in the... I enjoy this murder arc. This, this, this came out of nowhere. It was kind of refreshing. Because all of a sudden, it's just like a ghost story. And what the fuck is going on? It was genuinely spooky at times. Murders. But who cares about those dead people? Let's talk about the true murder in this Could anime. Deal. The loss of the sandwich. <gasps> no! After Kirito solves the... Kirito genuinely had more emotions after losing some sandwiches than other character deaths. Mystery, because he's just so cool, they run into... Is that a ghost? Why are these people not running away? Do they think they're white people in a horror film? Do they think they're white people in a horror film? Well, they usually don't die first in horror films. A new love interest approaches. Poor this Elizabeth. This is Liz. She makes weapons, but not successful relationships. She goes on a gather quest with Kirito to get some literal dragon poop, but mm -hmm. gets trapped in the equivalent the of a school of shit. shed in a romance anime. Since they are stuck in there, they have time to bond. Wow. He's just so cool. After making a new sword, the she piece can of finally shit. Conf You've been awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone knew that, like, Lisbeth was going to get cucked by Asta. There was no way Lisbeth had any chance. But, like, Lisbeth and Klein, I think that's an actual thing. Ben Asuna. You've been, you've been Asuna. Kirito and Asuna party up to clear floor 74. Floor 74. Yeah, what the fuck happened to the last 34s? Who cares? Or what happened to the rest of them? Oh no, they have to fight the Gleam floor eyes. boss. Kirito has a dual wielding ability oh that my only God. he can use oh because my God. he's just so cool. Well, the actual logic is there's like unique skills passive or some shit given to players and he's the one with the fastest reaction time. Therefore, he had that super unique, you know, dual wielding capability. He challenges Heathcliff for the ownership of Asuna. How could he lose? Yeah, Asuna is just an object, huh? <laughs> Remember in, in season one how, you know, there's like a, a, there's like objects that whenever you try to attack like different, you know, uh, structures and different buildings, they would say, you know, you know like a immortal object or like you can't touch this object, but <laughs> Asuna kind of is an object here just being dealt around. Yeah. How could he lose? I don't understand. He's so cool. After losing, he has to join Heathcliff's guild, kill some laughing coffin guy, but I'm sure that won't be important in the future. And they are so important, bro. They are so important. I love Laughing Coffin. It's a dumbass fucking tattoo, I'm not gonna lie. It's a coffin with just like a weird, like, creepy face. 
but I did enjoy how they showed up in GGO as well. Time to turn this show into a full-on romance anime, so they get married and go on their honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> what did he expect to happen? While going for a walk, they Sachi. think they run into another ghost. Sorry, not Sachi. This is our daughter now, Yui. Then they come to the conclusion that they should adopt this one. Don't get too attached, though, because she is just an AI who gets deleted. But And that's kind of crazy how the themes of SAO Season 3 and Season 4, what they're trying to tell you about are AIs, real people, right? In this game, in a simulation where people consider these AI NPCs to be not real things, if you actually spend time with them, you actually empathize and they're more humans than the actual humans outside. So. Even in SAO Season 1, like, I truly believe as much as people shit on SAO for the poor writing or the different plot holes, I do think that the author does a pretty great job in staying true to this whole theme of futuristic, you know, sci-fi, where AIs could be companions from the fucking beginning. Like, this shit's shown in Season 1, man. Don't worry, Kirito uses the admin account to save her heart because he's just so cool. That shit made no sense to me when watching season one in the beginning. However, as you watch more and more, they kind of show you the stuff that they left out in the light novel, how Kirito has always been a huge nerd. He's super into, I don't know, fucking software engineering. He knows how to code. He's good at mechatronics. His mom is some sort of like researcher or some sort of academic as well, right? So they, the foundation is there, but we were never shown that. So when he just went in and was Hacker Man out of nowhere, it felt like the most bullshit thing. I'm like, what? After fighting a floor boss, Kirito decides that he wants to be the leader of the guild. Turns out that Heathcliff is Kaiba in disguise, that was who hype. proceeds to paralyze everybody but Kirito for a final battle. I did enjoy Kaiba's, you know, secret here, right? Him being the final boss, it, it felt a little abrupt because there was many floors left and suddenly he was the final villain all along and we're going to part two, but the whole Kaiba reveal, Heathcliff reveal was... I mean, you could already see in the beginning when Kirito versus Heathcliff was done, right? He had this, like, way of stopping time, it seemed like, when Kirito was about to deliver a lethal blow, and ever since then, it's just like, hmm, this guy's kind of off. And then here, you know, we see that he was Kaiba all along. Well, you got me. By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, Kirito died. Good game. No, no, no. Kirito is just too cool to die. Yep. Kirito wins, ending the game, sending... But how did he win, right? Because he should have died here. But Ghost Kirito is here. Because he's got golden eyes. And I'm not sure if the author of SAO really understood what he was trying to do with this golden eye mode. From, but from the beginning, you could see that whenever the golden eye happens, it's a bullshit hack mode where you are God and nothing... You are no longer bound by the constraints of the system because you can pretty much make up the rules yourself. It's just... How much did the author have this concept fleshed out? Because, yeah, in the most crucial moments in each arc, Golden Eye Kirito will make an appearance and clutch, but <laughs> it always felt like a bullshit thing. Just out of nowhere, he just has this, but it gets explained a little bit better, I guess, in SAO Season 3 as they talk about mental image and having this confidence, which I still don't think really is the Golden Eye, because that shit happens later on in Kirito Duels. Anyways, it is bullshit. But I do look forward to Golden Eye Kirito every day to just kind of clutch in every season or every arc. Just too cool to die. Kirito wins, ending the game, sending everybody back. Oh, bro. I, this list? Johnny Black. Zaza. Bro, these members are already... I love this list. And we fixated on Zaza so hard because... You know, I don't know, Zaza's funny because it's just the fucking <laughs> slang for weed. Sending everybody back. At least we can finally learn why Kaiba did all of this. My One of the most... Un... It, it's... It, he doesn't have a reason. Straight up, in season one, the author was like, shit, I, I need to give him a reason, but I don't know why. So, so we just, and like, the funniest thing and the saddest thing is, SAO Abridged gave the better fucking conclusion. And what was the conclusion? It's a feature, not a bug. I was really, you know, tight on a deadline. I had to push this product out and I'm sorry. It just happened. It is what it is. In the actual anime, what did Kaiba say? Long time ago, I was obsessed with this floating castle. And I want to create it. The end. And I'm like, hold the fuck up. What about the unable to log out part and have people die in real life if they die in game? 
and then he disappears and i'm like what where is my answer where's my fucking closure Mother fu now let's talk about the characters in this anime all right starting off with the black swordsman kirito for yeah. me this character began the self-insert isekai protagonist story he did Yes, I know it's not an isekai technically. No, I think this is an isekai technically. If an isekai is defined as other world, there's no part about reincarnation in isekai, okay? Reincarnation is Tensai or Tensei. Isekai is other world, and if you deem these different worlds, virtual worlds, where you full dive into as another world, then I do think that SAO is an isekai, and Kirito the Black Swordsman is the template. For most of these fucking new isekais where they all have the same goddamn facial structure and hairstyle. ...storyline that you see so frequently. I mean, he's just a gamer guy who has the buff of getting the only women in the game while being completely broken. He even... Isekai is not defined as leaving your past behind. No, you're making shit up. Isekai is a literal Japanese world for other world or other world. That is a literal straight out textbook definition. You are inserting your own headcanon into this actual definition of a Japanese word. ...and gets his special dual-wielding ability, since he can click on a mouse faster than other people. Not even Reaction death speed. can beat Kirito, but this piece of paper can. So cool, Tear. Who- <laughs> The fuck? <laughs> Onisama! <laughs> Another Kirito clone. I'm sorry, but he's got the same goddamn facial structure and hair, the cool- The fucking black hair. It's him! Kirito? He's sick. He's cool. A lot of people shit on him. I think that in GGO, like there's this way of making Kirito seem very mature. A lot of people might argue with me about how Kirito is not a mature person. In season one, yes, but season one, he's an angsty teenager who's like, what, 14 and trying to figure shit out as he has these, you know, dependency issues and fear of other people disappearing around him. I get that, right? And that's why people think that he's just an angsty teenager, for sure. But as the story continues, he starts to realize the motivations as to how he moves forward. There's this constant iteration of how he says he's not strong. For example, in GGO, Shinon literally asks, Kirito, you're so strong. I want to be like you. But Kirito has this intimate moment with Shinon in a cave where he says, I'm not strong. I'm very scared and I'm very insecure. But because I'm not strong, that's where the strength comes from. I remember who I'm fighting for. I remember all these different past bonds and memories. And therefore, I pursue, you know, every day moving forward. And I think that's actually a beautiful way of developing Kirito from like an angsty teenager into someone who has gone through these harsh realities of near-death situations. Yes, it's a fucking video game, right? But you could die in it and now you could say like he's a hardened veteran. Now he's matured. I think that truly he has matured. And if you see the Kirito now beyond season two, season three, season four, like he is... A totally different character. He is so much more matured, so much more level-headed. I don't even think he's edgy. There's like a lot of cool edgy things and sword styles he does, but like, I think that he's a wonderful character. And a lot of people probably shit on him without even giving him a chance to fully develop beyond what people have seen in season one. Who's that Sundere? It's Asuna. It's your Discord kid. Jesus! Has she been eaten? Is Asuna the best? Discord piggy is a new word that I've never heard of. <laughs> I, I know Discord kitten? <laughs> I've never heard of Discord piggy. <laughs> Girl of the show, I think the real question we should be asking, is there literally anybody else on the show? Yo, these two were amazing. They actually made it to the end too. They survived. It was the first couple that we saw as a guy and a girl, but they got catfished. And then when they, they revealed who they really were, <laughs> this thing was like, wait a minute, you're actually only 17? show who's a competitor in the beginning she was a useful mysterious loner character however from this point forward she was a damsel in distress who needed her white knight to come and save her white knight in distress yes there's been multiple points where asna does get taken hostage or Asuna is someone that we need to save. Absolutely. ALO is literally that. Yeah. Asuna has... Uh, the reason I'm like questioning that is because I think back to what kind of character Asuna is. And she is a very independent, strong girl. She doesn't really need Kirito. I don't think. I, I think she'd be fine without him. But obviously they work together. But yes, there's been a lot of positions where she was a damsel in distress. Except this time, no, wait, she was still saved by him. She yep. also just turned into a basic tsundere, but, but lunar. Basic tsundere. There is a lot of tsundere moments in season one. Yes, we're thinking again, just Einkrad arc, right? I'm obviously 
coming in with a lot of different perspectives from season two beyond of what we see in Asuna. But yes, in season one, Sundere, damsel in distress, I agree. She can do other things like cook. Yes, I. She can't cook for shit, bro. She fucking chops a fucking ingredient and it turns into a fucking meal. There's some bullshit cooking system. Same with Lisbeth, bro. Blacksmith my ass. She fucking throws her hammer on an anvil once and a sword is fucking made. Don't lie to me. To enjoy a woman who has basic life skills. Too bad I do love a good tsundere. Alive somehow, T. Alive <laughs> somehow? A tier? Alright, alright, I'm fine with I A for Asuna. Alright, let's go. Yui, the adopted child of Kirito and Asuna. Yui is fucking bullshit. And often is the like Yui is one of the most efficient and uh, most useful characters because of her AI nature. <laughs> she is basically our guy. Whenever you we need something, like she will figure out an answer. She's so fucking OP. I don't really hate Yui. I don't really I don't like love Yui. I don't think she's my favorite character, but she's an enjoyable character that shows up and is very useful. Adopted child of Kirito and Asuna. I make the emotional support lolly joke quite a bit, but she's literally designed to be an emotional support lolly. And the irony in that is that the emotional support lolly had a mental breakdown as she witnessed the trauma being experienced by every player because she is part of the cardinal system. And then she saw Kirito and Asuna you know, uh, find love and therefore the emotional support. The therapist was getting therapy from Kirito and Asuna, which was funny to me. She was created to help and monitor all of the players' mental health in the game, which is a feature they should add to Valorant whenever I solo queue. She <laughs> sacrificed herself Menace. to save her parents, but I'm sure she'll be back. Cortana mm -hmm. tier. Pos Cortana tier? Come on! You put her in B tier! Yui was so useful! Cortana tier. Possibly the greatest villain planner since Aizen. Oh, Kaiba. Yeah? Um Kaiba S tier. I don't care. I don't care what you say. Kaiba is a fucking monster. He let 4,000 people die due to his bug. He never gave an actual good reason in season 1 as to why he did this shit. But, and again, it's my bias showing. Season 2 Beyond. A lot of it is because a lot of the fucking villains are just like creepy sexual assaulters. So Kaiba just looks way better in comparison. Kaiba's redemption arc as SU continues just gets better and better and therefore I'll put him in an S tier. And even in Aincrad arc, I love this reveal with, you know, as Heathcliff S tier. I'm not gonna lie. When he said that he forgot why he did all of this, That's I was bullshit. just yelling at my screen. Then yep. I have a th yeah, I was fucking pissed too, man. I was fucking stupid, right? And one of those inconsistencies was that say where the author may not really have a good understanding of what he's trying to do at the moment, but let him cook. Theory that somebody stole his loot when he was a child, so he spent his whole life planning this just to get back at him. He just I think one of the most common theories other than, you know, I, I it's a common theory which is more headcanon if anything, but I think really suits well into Aincrad Arakaiba is the God Complex, right? You know, no, in nowhere was the God Complex ever mentioned in the Aincrad Arc or even beyond, but you could assume that Kaiba did have a God Complex and therefore, you know, trapped every character in this game where he created it out of his dream as a child of reaching, you know, to the top of the fucking floating castle in some sort of fantasy land. Decides to join the game since, as he said, there's nothing more boring than watching someone play an MMORPG game. True. I genuinely don't know how the fuck you watch other streamers literally just play WoW. Then again, those people are probably going to come to my content and say, I genuinely don't know how you monkeys watch another dude watch, that say, a, watch a dude watch a video for you, so... I guess that's an audience for everybody. Came personal with me. Forgetful and forgettable tier. No, Kaiba is not forgetful and forgettable. Kaiba is fucking S tier, dude. Here. Time for final thoughts and rating the anime. This story had so much potential, having some of the best first episodes when mm -hmm. it comes to hooks. Yes, the first episode in terms of a hook. Holy shit, that's a 10 out of 10. Hooks. Yet, after being hit by the stupid stick, they decided to finish the whole trapped in a dating sim plot in half a season. I would have watched so many seasons of this anime if they just stayed in Sword Art Online instead of skipping 30 floors at a time. When the skipping 30 floors at a time, what? What? God damn, Jesus. Show me all these cheeks right now? God damn, monkey. But, um, it, it, it did feel out of place. Whenever you're trying to keep up with where people are and what level we're on, a next episode, a couple months fly by and you're, be, you're in a different, completely different floor. And you're like, what the fuck just happened? That was very jarring, I agree. When it comes to the characters, they're the most generic. Silicon, no! 
comes to the characters, they're the most generic characters of all time. Sunure, self-insert, sister, cooked, and casket. Are they generic? When I compare the SAO characters versus some of the other characters that we're watching in like different animes right now, and we watch a fucking lot of anime. Each season, it's like 20 plus weekly fucking seasonals plus community series, and SAO happens to be a community series. I didn't think that they were generic. Everyone has their distinct theme. Of course, there's cliches and tropes, but that exists in every anime, and it's not unique to SAO. I think this is a little bit of a harsh criticism. Cucked in casket. Don't even pretend that Austin and Kirito have a flushed out relationship. The relationship part, I agree. The, it came out of fucking nowhere. In the beginning, Austin and Kirito found themselves before they went into the first floor boss, right? In that meeting with Diabel. And Asuna was a loner, Kirito was a loner. They kind of seeked each other out because of their loner, I guess, vibe. And then they partied up. And after the partying... It, they got along well, and there's some sandwich share moments, right? In, at nighttime, we shared bread with Asuna with jam. I guess that was one of the most, in, in the beginning, one of the moments that was intimate between them. And then afterwards, we don't see Asuna for a long fucking time. Until she's already in this, like, you know, the fucking, her guild that she's in as a vice captain. And then, yeah, she kind of gets mad at Kirito for napping. But... The true bonding kind of starts whenever Kirito is in like a life or death situation. Every time Kirito was in like a super life or death situation, she gets so close to Kirito. Like Gleam Eyes, for example, at the end of the duel was one of those important moments. Kura Deal almost assassinating Kirito was also one of those moments, right? And yeah, those are definitely like um, exponential factors. And whenever their relationship really, it's like a catalyst to their relationship as they get more intimate. But like that intimacy, the setup, how was the setup? Kind of lacking. And then I thought about how they're just 14 year olds. You know? They're just dumb, horny 14 year olds. Yeah, I know Asna's one year older, but I think that actually does make sense. Quite often when I'm watching rom coms, I'm coming from the perspective of like, you know, a fucking grown man with idealized, you know, opinions of how different characters should act as if they're perfect humans, but they're just dumb. Horny kids stuck in a game and Kirito's cool. I, I think that it honestly isn't too bad. But yes, Asuna, Kirito relationship, how she folded for him. It did happen very rapidly. And I think the light novel might do more justice in fleshing out those initial stages. They didn't even know each other's ages until the end of the anime. How dare you? Okay, tell me Kirito's name then. Uh, Kirito? Kazuto? Kazuto. No, it's Kazuto Kirigaya. Yeah. How do you get married to somebody without knowing their name? Or age. Plus, all the women in this anime play off the white knight trope. The soundtracks in this anime were top tier. It has argued All the women in this anime play the white knight trope, as in Kirito is the white knight that saves them. Yeah. One of the greatest OPs of all time. As yes, the soundtracks, the openings, endings, very iconic. Well, as the music used in the fight scenes. Finally, the animation, which honestly Beautiful, still stunning. holds up today. After Absolutely. all these bad things I said about the anime, surely I'll give it a low score, right? While my anime list gave. I honestly think that 7.2 out of 10 is a reasonable score for SEO Part 1. If we think of an objective rating for SEO Part 1, I don't think it's in the realm of an 8 because of the inconsistencies and plot points and honestly dumb writing at times. However, it doesn't take away from my experience of how much I enjoyed SEO. And I think that like this rating again is a pretty reasonable assessment. Gave this anime a score of 7.2 out of 10. I will be giving it a score of 8.4 Kaiba imposters out of 8.4. I'm down. Glaze, let's go. 10. In conclusion, you may as well just watch SAO Abridged because it's all. These motherfuckers are releasing one episode per year. Dude, they're still in season one abridged what the fuck are they doing listen i understand that it's a non-profit organization or whatever and they got a whole team and working on different projects and they got full-time jobs and they're doing other shit but like come on man come on man all downhill from here did you know that in this fuck hello haven't slept in 48 hours in order to make a video lunar that was here. a good video click here if you want to see my channel no, it was a great video, Lunar Equinox. And remember, we're just rating Aincrad Arc. I think that Aincrad Arc is one of the most iconic seasons of SAO. It had the most beautiful hook in SAO. It got a lot of people 
on board, but I think a lot of people were a bit let down with the inconsistencies and the plot holes. And as soon as ALO happens, there's a lot of SEO hate. And I think that it's such a hated show, and I, wouldn't, I am willing to say that SAO is an underrated anime. That's right. You're going to think I'm crazy, but take a step back and realize how much hate SAO gets and realize that their talking points, they're not genuine talking points. No one really has a fucking understanding of what I hate SAO. They bandwagon and other content creators, you know, shitting on SAO because that was part of the trend a long time ago. If you actually genuinely gave season one, two, three, four, a chance, you wouldn't be saying that shit. Yes, I acknowledge that ALO is dookie. There's some stu stupid shit going on. However, GGO is amazing. Shinon is an amazing character. And even after that, the Tonki arc was a little bit of like a slice of like, you know, a little detour. Mother's Rosarios was an extremely touching, heartfelt story. And then season three onward is just a fucking home run. SAO and Crowd Arc, I'm glad I enjoyed it. Again, I think that this is one of the most overrated series and one of the most underrated series. And you should check out SAO if you haven't.